quite a bit. What is a good plane for somebody to start flying with? And most of the time people say, choose just get yourself a high wing float plane, which is a very good idea. If you're serious about getting into RC airplanes and you want something that's going to be reliable, something that's strong and durable, and you're going to be able to get that thing in the air, learn how to fly, be comfortable, and yet, and yet at the same time, it won't get boring after a short period of time. You're going to want something that you can evolve with, something that as you progress and you start getting the handle of the airplane, you're going to want something that can fly really nice as well. So, so let's go inside and we'll get to building on it and we'll see you in a little bit. I see UPS dropped off my new plane. The FMS Sky Trainer, Cessna 182. Let's go get this thing built. All right, here we have it from nitroplanes.com, the FMS 100% scale training model. It's an EPO foam, which means it's very durable. This thing is a Cessna 182 style. Let's get it out of the box, get it built, and get it in the air. As you can see from the box, everything looks nice and well packed. Now when they say that this plane is ready to fly, they're not kidding. You've got your transmitter, your receiver's already installed. It even comes with a battery to get you going. They include the battery charger and your alligator clip uh, power plugs for it. I just wanted to point out that you notice that there's the receiver in there, your two servos, one for your elevator, one for your rudder. And also from the rudder, from this side here, you'll notice that it's also going down to the front steerable nose gear. So all of that stuff is already pre-assembled for you, including the motor as well. You got the nice spinner on the front. So this assembly is going to go very quick. Now again, for the beginning modeler and pilot, you won't have to worry about assembling too much detail because you've already got your ailerons already installed with your hinges and your clevises. So this thing's going to go together really nice. Also just wanted to kind of give a close up because this thing is really, really, really strong. I'm very impressed with how strong this thing, this foam is. It's important to note that the instructions that come with this plane are very easy to follow along. It's not a thick book, it's very thin, very easy to assemble this. So we're going to go ahead and get started. It wants us to start with the gear. First we're going to locate the front gear. That's the one with the wheels already nicely attached, ready to go. And it just simply just screws right onto your front nose rod here. Now for the rear, this is just as easy. Now, on this one, the wheel isn't attached because this rod is going to go through through the wheel and then screw onto the other side. So it's very simple. Just a line and a line and tighten it down. And there we have it. Now we can flip it back over and start working on the top. Now in step two, they actually want you to cut the tail here open so that we can slide your elevator and horizontals in place. So where I'm cutting, I'm actually cutting right here where the two parts of the sticker are separated. I'm kind of cutting at a small angle just so that I can, that's the thinnest area. Okay, both sides are cut and it just lifts straight up like so. We're going to lift this hatch up a little bit so I can get some glue up and under it. Being careful not to get any on the actual elevator. Okay, there's a little there. A little there. And we're going to put just a little on the actual cut. Okay, I'm ready to go ahead and put my vertical fin on. And before I put any glue in here, make sure you test fit it first because it can be a little tight at first and if you've already got the glue in there the glue will actually even without the accelerator will start to stick and make it very difficult to get in and out so I'm actually just kind of doing a test fit to see just how strong I need to push if there's any problems and as you see she actually goes very nicely right in there so now I'm ready to go ahead and apply the glue. Next stage that we're going to work on is going to get the wings attached. Take either side of the wing it doesn't matter and you should find a long carbon fiber tube. You want to just slide that inside the wing. I'm going to take the other one. We're going to do the same thing. Get that slid off. You will find two wires with pins 
just line up the black wire to the black wire and attach. And you'll be fine. Okay, I've aligned the two front little tabs into the holes here. Slide these down. Kind of fits in there nice and tight. Okay, and then we're going to take two of the screws. This is going to actually bolt the wing down to the main fuselage. Down. Okay, now the next stage that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get the actual propeller put on. First we want to take this little collet off. Okay, we've got the propeller all tightened down. Next we're just going to put the spinner on there. we got her all nice and lined up. We'll tighten this down. And we're almost done. Before I connect my battery, and this goes for any RC plane, helicopter, boat, car, whatever it is, remote control, make sure you always turn your transmitter on first and make sure it's the last thing that goes off. So before I plug this in, I'm going to turn my transmitter on. Not only am I going to turn my transmitter on, but I'm going to make sure that my antenna is at least halfway extended. This will cut down on in any interference. So let's first check out the elevator control rod. I'm going to go ahead and move my elevator up and down. You can see the rod's moving. So right there, I know when I let go, she's nice and centered. So I want to make sure that that's where I attach my clevis. Insert the pin into the control horn, snap it down, and now, and now I have elevator control, so once again I'll test, as you can see, and I'm going to repeat the process for the rudder. 